The white kicking off. Dan Bailey strikes it from east to west, hanging in the wind, a short kick, and it's fielded by Des Bryant at the 20, straight ahead to the side to the 30, fumbles a football at the 39, it's loose at the 41-yard line, and I think the white has recovered it. Kate takes the shotgun snap on third and 10, swings it out to the right side, the pass is caught inside the five and diving into the end zone for a touchdown. Bo Johnson caught it out of the backfield at about the seven, scooted down the right sideline and carried a tackler into the end zone and the white strikes first here in the orange-white game. Single receivers left and right, I formation, orange on third and one from the 45, handoff on the left side to the 35, to the 30, and finally pushed out of bounds inside the white 30 at the 27. Third and four for the orange from the white 19. Robinson throws a screen pass to Hunter on the right side, first down to the 15, and he scoots all the way down to the 10-yard line. Trying to make it a 7-3 game. The snap is good, the ball is down, there's no rush. The kick is on the way, and it's good. No, it's no good, wide left. I beg your pardon. The snap was wide to right of Kate out of the shotgun, and he's forced to just fall on the football for a nine yard loss back at the white 37. Third and 19, empty backfield, and Kate gets a shotgun snap under pressure, and he'll be called down back at the 25 yard line. Kate, the sophomore, gets the snap, hands it off to the tailback, and there's no room to run. Well, it's a nice job by the Orange defenders there, Zeb Clements. And again, Lucian Antoine. Dave, the thing that jumps out, I haven't seen him deliver one of those blows that earned him the nickname the Punisher yet. But what I've seen so far from Antoine there from his safety spot closes very quickly. He helped force that play nowhere. When Tim Beckman's defense takes the field in August, there might be one player who stands out. He is Lucian Antoine, but you can call this safety the Punisher. I asked him if there was something I could call him other than Lucian uh, to make it easier for me, and he said, well, they call me the Punisher back home. I said, well, the Punisher it is, uh, but while you're here, you have to live up to that reputation as a tackler, which he has. Uh, he's been the guy that... Uh, that's given out big hits this spring. He's had five or six really big hits in practice, which has uh, energized our defense. The JUCO transfer was brought in to shore up a secondary that was dead last in the Big 12, surrendering over 300 yards a game through the air. But what the defensive staff found was a guy to deliver a game-changing knockout blow, and his hits can be heard all the way to the top of Boone Pickens Stadium. After you see him play one time, you'll know exactly why they call him that. So he, I think the first practice we were in, in pads, you know, we weren't really tackling, and and uh, he gets his first shot to hit somebody, and I think he laid out Des Bryant on the sideline. Uh, he's just always delivering big hits, you know, whether it's in drills against uh, the defense, even his defensive teammates, or against the offense. You know, wide receivers coming across the middle, they have to be aware and have their head on a swivel where he's at at all times, because, you know, he's coming and trying to take your head off at all times. And, you know, that's something we didn't have last year, and, and that's something that started you know, everybody's starting to pick up on that. You see T.J. Bell hitting people. You see Aldarius Thompson hitting people. And the guys that, you know, you normally don't hear about, you know, they've been hitting a lot of people this spring. And that's just something he's rubbed off on, and, you know, it's going to carry on into the season. You don't see any changes in personnel grouping for the Orange defense. Neither defense will do that. And Kate scrambling to his right, floats it down the field. It's intercepted at the 34-yard line, running all the way across the field to the right side to the 22 and dropped at the 20-yard line is James Thomas, the redshirt freshman. Takes a snap, runs the option to the short side, the left side. He tries to push his way into the end zone, and he can't. He's knocked out of bounds inside the one-yard line, and the white defense denies the orange on first and goal again. <laughs> on first and ten, Kate takes a snap, fakes a handoff, drops back to pass. He's under duress, and he is touched down by Ugo Chinasa. Four receivers, three to the right, one to the left. One back set with Kendall Hunter. Wheaton takes a snap, sets up, floats it toward the near side of the end zone. The pass is caught, but out of bounds. Out of the end zone was Des Bryant. Tried to throw the fade route to him, and Bryant could not stay in bounds. And Wheaton takes the shotgun snap, flushed from the pocket, rolls out to his left, throws oh. to the end zone. The pass is incomplete. Des Bryant had it and appeared to be in the process of making the catch, but I think 
that Quentin Moore got a hand in there and yanked it out at the last moment in the end zone. So four times, the Orange has had a first and goal at the 10-yard line, and four times the Orange has failed to score. And the half comes to an end with the white on top of the orange. Thing. More to come on the Oklahoma State Spring Tour. When we return, we'll look at quarterback Zach Robinson. He's the undisputed leader behind center. And looking to bring the Cowboys to the BCS. All right, here we go. Let's go. Plus, we'll check out some of the sounds of the game from head coach Mike Gundy. It's all next when we return.